Hey guys, it's Bobby Legs, and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And today I'll be reviewing the Casio GWFA 1000 1A, also known as the Frogman. Now, before we jump into the full review, I, I want to mention that this is going to be more of an overview of the Frogman, a 30,000 foot level. There's a whole lot of functionality here, especially when it comes to the diving part that I feel like it deserves another video. Um, so we're just going to go and talk about some of the basics of this watch. Um, now, uh, I didn't pick up this watch because I'm a diver. Uh, I picked it up because mainly because of aesthetics wise, I really like the way it looks. Um, now, I've been more attracted to these guys, the squares, uh, when it comes to G-Shocks, most of my life. For the last 30 years, I've been collecting these guys on and off, and this one specifically is the titanium G-Shock square. This is the watch I gravitate to. Um, this is the one that's nostalgic to me, the square. Um, these guys didn't have a meaning, any, any of these huge G-Shocks, Master of G collection, other collections. I just thought they were just so ridiculously big. I have a six and three quarter inch wrist and I, and I will give you guys a wrist shot in a little while. But I just thought these things were big and like the functionality purposes, like I, I, I don't need, you know, all this functionality in my life. Um, but I, I that started to change a few months ago. Um, you know, as I get exposed to more and more watches out there and, you know, my mind and opinions change on certain things. Uh, I was more willing to experiment a little bit. Uh, the worst case scenario, I bring in a watch that I don't like. At least I get a review out of it, and then I can sell it. Uh, best case scenario is I really, really like it, and I keep it in the collection. And so the first Master of G-Series watch that came out this year, that um, a version that came out this year that I liked, was the uh, the Gravity Master, and I picked one up. And I liked it. And the size didn't really bother me. I mean, it was huge, right? But the weight of it was so light, it just didn't feel like a very big watch to me. Now, look, if you have a six and a half inch or lower um, or smaller inch wrist, then it may be an, an issue for you. But I think these watches, if you're in the bare minimum of six and three quarters, six and a half and up, uh, you can pull these off as long as you're comfortable with them. I know people with the same size wrist um, who tried the Munmaster or the uh, Gravity Master, and it was like, nope, I can't do it. Uh, I, I think I can. And and so I picked up the Gravity Master, did a review, loved it, kept it in my collection. A friend sent me his Mud Master, loved that more, sold the Gravity Master, bought myself a Mud Master. Um, and then, you know, the Frogman was always a curiosity to me. I just love how uh, it looks, uh, the offset strap, uh, a very, very different look um, in my mind. So I've always wanted to pick one up. But I just felt like the whole functionality stuff, uh, all the diving stuff, was just way too much over my head. So, um, but when they came out with this analog version this year, the first um, analog version of the Frogman, I was like, "Yep, okay, I got, I got to bring this in." And I thought I got a pretty good deal on this one, um, so it was a no-brainer for me. Now, I know there's some Frogman purists out there who are not a big fan of the analog version and some of the functionality on the watch. Um, which seems to be more available on this watch on the app, right? And we'll get a little bit into that, but not a lot. Um, so I get that maybe there are some differences um, that are for the worse in this watch in the eyes of the Frogman purists. But again, we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, so let's jump right into the specs, shall we? Uh, after that long, long, uh, long-winded uh, soliloquy. Um, now there's so I'm going to give you this, the the uh, specs from the site. We have a 56.7 uh, lug to lug, 53.3 uh, uh, case diameter, and a 14.7 case thickness. Let's measure here. So you, I've been getting some different measurements, but that's okay. It just depends on where I guess you're you're looking at. So case diameter here, I'm getting, um, you know, around 54.4, and I'm going from 2 o'clock to the pusher at 8 o'clock. The crown to the 9 o'clock, 52.6. Um, let's do lug to lug here. 
and I'm getting like 57.3 so you know pretty close to what they're saying and case thickness 17.9 I guess you know it depends on where yeah 18 I mean it varies it really does depend on where you're you're measuring anyway it's a big watch you know that's what it cut you know comes down to so you do have this carbon core um, guard structure um, you notice you don't have any screws here for the back um, so it's like almost like one piece and if you want to change the battery you're gonna have to go on top here with the screws now speaking of battery as per the site it's 30 months on a rechargeable battery so that's an operation period when stored in total darkness with the power safe function on after a full charge so you're getting 30 months there it's not it's not solar of course I mean it is it is I'm sorry it is tough solar it is solar um, then you have also a Bluetooth smartphone link with an app so I did a lot of uh, the time setting through the app I just um, found it less overwhelming at the time um, so um, you can do that there and I did the dual time there and more into and more of that um, in a little bit it's ISO 200 meters water resistance ISO certified um, Neo bright loom on the uh, hands and hour markers here you do have a uh, spherical sapphire glass here uh, crystal it says non AR coated uh, on on the site uh, screw down crown here there is some functionality here especially with the stopwatch and other things uh, again we'll talk about that in another video magnetic resistance uh, shock resistance um, let's look at that cool case back here with a lot of information and the, the, the frogman holding like a, a lightning bolt or an arrow bolt um, just a cool cool looking watch tough tough watch the strap is this resin very tough um, resin keeper stainless steel buckle uh, two holes per per for the buckle uh, to get a nice nice grip um, let's talk about the multi-band six so it's a timekeeping so um, there's uh, six I believe six atomic uh, towers or six towers where um, it'll ping to um, until it gets um, a time um, and then I think once it like if it pings and hits one it'll it'll stop but it'll ping until it hits one of them um, you can also um, use the app to up, uh, update the the, the, the watch uh, for, for timekeeping as well so let's get right into the dial so let's start off right here at the let me zoom in as much as I can at the three o'clock position, you have a sub dial here that gives you some calendar function here. Um, then the tide function at where you're at. And all of these can be cycled through using this lower left hand button. Um, stopwatch, timer, um, an alarm. So one click, you go into your tide functionality. And then stopwatch, timer, alarm and back to your calendar um, then you have indicators here for daylight savings time standard time and uh, and others and then you have that dive function there that D which you hold down this button here for several seconds and you can get into it so like I said we're going to touch that on in another video you have the date here uh, just underneath the four o'clock position at the eight o'clock position you have another dial that is your dual time and right underneath here one before I do that if you press this button on top it'll move the hands away um, to a position where um, you can get a clear view so you have an AM PM indicator and that's the AM PM ind indicator for your dual time function I have it set to Paris France so right now it's 2:30 in Paris it's 8:30 here in New Jersey and then up here you have a 24 hour indicator uh, basically um, giving you an indication uh, of your uh, main time here uh, alarm off and on indicator as well up here so let's zoom back out now um, carbon case right so and you have the frogman writing I, there's several versions of this color versions you have a blue and a red and I just like this black version because I do I felt like this like frogman in yellow really popped up uh, out on me and so in the seconds hand so I like that combination 
of um, yellow and black, G-Shock written on top, shock resistance in the bottom, start, stop, and then you have this knurled crown here. We'll get into that in another video as well. So let's put this on wrist. Now, like I said, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist and, and this watch, it, it's a big watch, but because of the weight, it just doesn't feel that big on me. I don't know. Um, and this is a, a personal preference, but I, I, I love wearing this watch, especially when I'm outside um, and playing with the kids. It's just, it's just a tough watch. I feel like I don't have to baby this thing at all. Not that I baby my watches, but you know, I'm more careful with some than others. Um, so I have it fitted loosely. That's how I like to wear this watch, a little loose. Um, I guess I'm in between here um, where uh, where it's a little bit too tight and, and, and where it fits just right. So a, a little loose is fine with me. Uh, let's do a size comparison, right? So I showed you what the watch looked like with your G-Shock Square. So definitely a lot bigger, right? So let's use this, uh, let's show it up against this G-Shock Move watch here. So, you know, the Move is actually the, uh, a lot, uh, it looks bigger for sure. And then uh, let's compare it to my biggest uh, mechanical watch, the Luminor, Panerai Luminor. Um, now this watch here is around 43, 44 millimeter case diameter. Um, so definitely a lot smaller and it's a little lighter, but, um, but, uh, the strap has some effect to that as well. So anyway, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to stop the video here with, uh, or at least stop the review portion of the video here. Cause I think we've gone over uh, a good amount of, of, um, detail. There's still a whole lot more to go over and I'll do that in a future video, hopefully soon. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about the uh, Frogman. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments or read your comments below. I love connecting with you guys. Um, it's one of my favorite things about this whole experience. So please leave a comment. And I will see you guys in the next video.